Welcome to another light reading telecom innovator video. This is where we are introducing you to some of the people and companies moving the global communications industry forward. Uh, I'm Phil Harvey. I'm the editor here at Light Reading. And today I'm joined on the presentation by John Fagan from CSG. Hi, John. How are you? Good, Phil. How are you doing? Nice to see you. It's great to see you as well. And thanks for uh, for joining us today. So uh, I, I think our uh, our audience, our viewers, our readers, our listeners know something about CSG, but I, I, I want to, uh, th this might be the first time some folks have, have uh, seen or heard from you. And I want to, first of all, um, find out a little bit about your role at CSG, and then we can talk a little bit about um, what CSG provides to you know global telecom companies. Sure. Yeah, that's no problem. Um, my, you know, my title is senior system, senior principal systems architect. Um, but mm -hmm. basically, what that translates to at CSG is, uh, you know, my focus is in uh, I'm the head of public cloud, so I help build okay. out the public cloud practice. I help with M and A. I help with migrations, technology adoption, strategy, and things like that. That's fantastic. And then in that realm, what uh, what services does CSG provide? Because everybody's interested in the the growth and kind of uh, uh, the use of the public cloud in, in all walks of life. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, at the top level, CSG provides software solutions to help telecom service providers, you know, monetize, engage and retain customers. Um, within that, we have some of the most probably recognize solutions across policy, charging, uh, billing, and wholesale. And today we are deployed in over 130 countries. Okay, so um, uh, definitely a global company and definitely um, helping service providers um, with the, you know, do business as service providers, but also do business in the era of cloud. Um, I guess the next logical question then would be, you know, this this idea of the uh, the kind of encroachment of cloud providers onto different communication services. There's there's this sort of fear in general of why, um, uh, uh, you know, of of that market shift, I guess. Um, so should should telcos be afraid of the cloud? No, I, I don't believe they should be at all. I, I'm a strong believer that telcos should be running towards the cloud. Um, and, and the reason there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, you know, basic things like scalability, sustainability, you know, uh, flexibility, a number of ability words, right? Uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of innovation there. And this is where the industry is going. And, and, and I think what's really important is, is you have to, as a company, be ready for the next thing. And you have to be willing to invest in where your customers are going. And CSG is in a really interesting position because we... We have customers, but really what we're doing is helping our customers support their customers. And they have an expectation to have services quickly, flexible, how they want it. And our job is to help get our customers servicing their customers better. And we find that public cloud allows us to do that in a very rich and quick and dynamic way. Uh, and that helps us be a much better you know, partner to our, to our customers that we work with. Yeah, that's a. I like the way you frame that though, because it's about it's about investing in the future and really where the you know the the customers and businesses that telcos are trying to serve are yeah. are going. Um, so what, what you you covered this a little bit, but what's CSG's driver for being so um, forward about adopting the cloud? Because there's a lot of uh, there, there's a pretty wide variety of opinions about cloud adoption within the telecom. Uh, you know. Uh, telecom universe, I guess. So, so what's what's the motivation and the and the drive on CSG side of the ledger? You know, if for us it's a continuation. Uh, you know, if you go back in our history, um, in the mid '90s, uh, we were doing SaaS before it was really called SaaS. You know, we <laughs> had a lot of our customers connecting to us, and we were becoming a part of our customers' business. Right? Um, we weren't just you know, you can't look at cloud and these things as just another technology. You know, it's just a, somebody else's data center. It doesn't work like that. It works. Um, it works when your company uh, forms itself around this new business model. And CSG really believes in being customer obsessed. Um, mm -hmm. We've always held that, and our customers 
again, need to be able to sell and be dynamic for their customers. So we don't feel that Comcast, Dish, Time Warner are our customers only. We feel that the people they are serving. And so we need to be able to provide things and services for them uh, that, that would take too long to develop in your own data center. And we can use public cloud services. Um, the old, the old, one of the old things is the Lego block analogy. And we mm-hmm. can, it's not a core competency for us to build these services. It's better for us to utilize these public cloud services in a way that makes us uh, interesting for our customers uh, to be able to service their groups. That makes sense. Um, the, the, the adoption of the cloud by telcos it, it can be perceived to be, uh, you know, expensive, uh, it's a big risk, and it's mm-hmm. time-consuming. And those are generally things that telcos want to avoid. Um, what's <laughs> been CSG's approach to cloud adoption? It's interesting. You know, every time you have one of these major technical evolutions or these big compelling events in business, there is a lot of fear. And that's that's mm-hmm. very normal. I think what you have to do, though, is you have to really understand what it is you're going to. Right. So in public cloud, if you don't do it correctly, if you don't adopt it correctly, it can be more expensive. If you don't if you don't view it as how can I add on to my services, it will be more expensive. At CSG, what we've done is is we've organized our business and our teams around public cloud in these areas. Right. So we have we have full stack teams that have everybody from product into technical into sales into um, legal, like different areas that are all constantly working together. And they know that that this is centered around this larger business changing thing, which is public cloud. And that makes us extremely flexible. Kind of the old the old ideologies of of everything being very waterfall and very like a lot of planning, a lot of execution, and then do we see the value is not really valuable to us. It doesn't, it's, it's not what our customers need. So we focused and centered our people. It starts with people and we focused our people around these ideas of fast feedback, DevOps, you know, attaining what our customer needs very quickly, fast failure, all of these things. And, and different idea sets and mindsets helping drive the dynamic nature of what our customer needs uh, is how we do it. And it's what makes us a lot different from a lot of other companies in our space. Hmm. Yeah, that, 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 that's intriguing, especially by starting with the people. But mm-hmm. how does it translate into the products that CSG is offering in the market? You know, uh, we have we have you know, three main areas like digital monetization, field service management, and payments, right? Mm -hmm. And this allows us um, to be very dynamic, right? So if we have customers that need specific things that are integral to their business, um, we can can help them with that. And the flexibility, the agility, all of it in public cloud that you get um, is a business changer. And, and it's changed our products quite a bit. Even if we have a product that might be what we would consider legacy or traditional, there are aspects of public cloud or additions or service additions that we can add on and manipulate and change for what our customers need very quickly. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see. So uh, to kind of... Uh, be a bit more forward looking. Um, what's the what, what should we expect next out of CSG in the in the cloud arena? Yeah, we, we have uh, we're we're really fortunate enough to have um, uh, substantial deployments and really great partnerships with the two leading cloud providers, um, mainly Microsoft and and AWS. We're really mm-hmm. fortunate last year that we were named Microsoft Partner of the Year for Media. And communications, right, right. Um, for some of our solutions in Azure, and and we're just really excited to continue developing this. It, it's very interesting. I started this about four or five years ago, and and I think every week I reexamine and relearn, and am amazed at how much this changes your business for the positive. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think, uh, you know, it's important for us to continue partnering with some companies that we have this year, like in Marset and Axiata Digital Labs, Cincinnati Bells, CBTS, and Telenor. Mm-hmm. And we want to continue evolving our products to further take advantage of the cloud 
uh, services and get into 5G and wireless and, and whatnot. But again, I think probably the central theme, Phil, that you've heard me say is that we want to continually be integral to our customers' businesses and develop new ways to be of value to them. And we really feel that public cloud gives us that. So... That's fantastic. Um, and we're, we're just about out of time, but this really gives us a good uh, kind of overview of CSG's uh, thoughts around what's happening in the cloud, uh, where, where telcos should be uh, excited about getting closer to the cloud and adopting the cloud. And then, uh, you know, um, and then what that means for their customers uh, mm-hmm. going forward. Uh, yeah. John Fagan, thanks so much for uh, spending the time. I do appreciate it. Thanks, Phil. It's been a pleasure. 